Today at work, I was trying to call my wife, but for some reason, my phone calls weren't getting through to her. So I used one of my coworkers' phones to dial my house number and call home. So I call home and a sweet voice answers the phone. It's my daughter. I go, hey, cutie, how you doing? She goes, hey, daddy, what's up? And I go, I'm just at work. Uh, what are you and mommy doing? She says, uh, well, I just finished lunch and mommy's upstairs. I go, cutie, what's mommy doing upstairs? She goes, she's with Uncle Paul. And I go, Uncle Paul? We don't have an Uncle Paul. What do you mean? She's like, yeah, she's with Uncle Paul. They're upstairs in their room. So I'm like, cutie, that doesn't sound right. So what I want you to do is I want you to leave the phone on the kitchen table, go upstairs to your mommy's room and say, hey, daddy just pulled in the driveway and tell me what happens, all right? She did it and like a minute later, she comes back and picks up the phone and goes, okay, daddy, I did it. And I go, okay, what, what happened? She goes, well, mommy came running out of her room naked and she tripped down the stairs and bumped her head and now she can't get up. So I was like, what about the other guy? And she goes, well, Uncle Paul tried to jump out of the window into the pool, but he missed and hit the floor. Now he won't wake up. So I was like, we don't have a pool. Then I look at the phone number and I was like, oh, sorry, wrong number. Story time about the craziest thing I saw while working at a mental health facility. I work in a mental health facility as a psychiatric technician. My job is to help people with mental health distress by providing emotional support, helping develop positive coping skills, and provide medical attention. Some of the individuals that I treat have severe mental illness, which can lead to violence. One day, I was assigned to a patient that I'll never forget. He was on a 24-hour observation because he was self-harming and deemed high risk. He had tried to harm others earlier in the day, so he was locked into a padded room with only a bed, a bathroom, and a tear-proof blanket. I was assigned to watch him for the day from outside of the room to ensure that he wouldn't harm himself until he could be seen by a doctor. He was talking about things that made absolutely no sense, running around in circles inside of the room and asking me if I was Jesus. He would start screaming at the top of his lungs about random things, curse at me one minute then apologize the next, and kept spinning on the window just to wipe it off a few seconds later. I attempted to calm him down, but he was on a rampage. At one point, he turned his back to me and appeared to be rubbing his eye for some time. However, when he turned around, I almost passed out. He had ripped his eyeball completely out of the socket and began tossing it up and down in the air while calmly singing to himself. The situation only got worse from here. Part 2 of the craziest thing I saw while working at a mental health facility. The man continued throwing his eyeball in the air and catching it while calmly singing slow jams. In disbelief, I immediately called for the guards to come and help me. As they came running, I told the man to stop playing with the eyeball and put it down. He then flashed me a smile and put his eyeball close to his mouth. I knew where this was going, so I begged him not to do it. He proceeded to put his eyeball in his mouth and began intensely chewing it. The guards unlocked his door and rushed in. He was jumping and running around trying to avoid them. When they finally got him restrained and under control, they told him to open his mouth and spit out the eyeball. Sure enough, he quickly swallowed it. I asked him why he would do that and he told me that President Ronald Reagan told him to. He said it's okay because he still has another eye left and he could see just fine and that he only wanted to have one anyway. That's when the ambulance arrived to come and take him to the hospital. When the paramedics asked him what happened to his eye, he proceeded to throw up on demand in front of everyone. He pointed to his chewed up eyeball and the pile of vomit on the floor and asked them if they could put it back in his eye socket for him. After going to the hospital, he was transferred to a different facility for a higher level of care. To this day, whenever I see someone rubbing their eye, I get squeamish. So one day in elementary school, it was lunchtime. A bitch had to go potty. It was poo, poo time. So I remember I went to the restroom and I was exploding or whatever. And these girls walked in. We're gonna call them the chipettes, okay? <laughs> This is the best pop. <laughs> oh, the chipettes start yelling in the bathroom. Is someone here? Can someone hear me? Like, I didn't say anything. I was literally taking a shit. Like, what? These girls, dead ass, start laughing. They turn off the lights in the bathroom. They turn on all the sinks, whatever. And they start saying, like, Bloody Mary or some shit. And then the chipettes run out of the bathroom and shut the door. So here I am, getting casted on. I remember seeing a shadow. I... I fell on my ass and I start screaming and crying. It wasn't good. So someone called the janitor. Janitor walks in to check up on me. It's a guy. Story time of the most dirtiest college roommate ever. By the way, we're calling her Jessie. So I moved in before Jessie and I get settled and decorate. The next day she comes and throws her bag on the bed, then leaves. I thought it was weird because she didn't even say anything to me. Couple hours later, she comes back and I'm like, uh, hello. And she's like, my bed and comes give me a hug. She smelled very bad. She starts unpacking all of her clothes and blankets, but they smell like mildew. Anyways, a week later, there's this party going on for freshmen, and she goes, but I stay in because I had a migraine. I told her that when she comes back, can she keep the light off? Now it's 2 a.m., and she comes back in very loud, uses the bathroom, then goes to sleep. And now I'm up, so I got up to use the bathroom too. When I sit down on the toilet, I feel something very squishy. It was dark because, like I said, I had a migraine. I get up, turn the light on, and I was sitting in her shit. Part 3 about how I got caught hooking up with my stepson. 
put a finger down if from as soon as you were born your parents would force you to watch porn specifically a man and a woman that way as you grew up you would think that relationships were supposed to be between men and women and so every time you saw a couple of the same gender you would automatically assume that they weren't normal and had some type of mental illness and so when you grew up and sooner or later made a friend who you got really close with and eventually became best friends with and she came out to you and told you she was gay you ended up dropping her and not only that but made a fake page and outed her so then the whole school knew but she still doesn't know that it was you and so one day when your parents who gave you that mindset died in a car crash that friend you outed and completely violated offered to let you stay with them and her parents would take custody of you even though you weren't as close as you used to be and you took up on that offer and started living with her but she still doesn't know that it was you who outed her until one day you felt too bad so you decided to tell her i'm running out of time so like for part two I've always had a good relationship with my mother-in-law up until I was pregnant. My husband's side of the family hasn't had a girl born in the past 100 years. So when everyone found out I was pregnant with a girl, no one believed me. Everyone was so shocked when it was announced that most of them denied it up until the moment she was born. And that's when the horrible comments started. Whenever my husband wasn't around, my mother-in-law would make snarky comments like, I wonder where she got that nose. It's definitely not my son's. I never told him and let everything slide because she's older and she's my mother-in-law. But when I was pregnant with baby number two, and yes, it was another girl, I told him to wait as long as possible because I know she wouldn't like the news. When she found out it was a girl, she started sobbing and screaming. She was calling me a whore and demanded that I get out of her house. Those girls are not ours. She's a whore, a slut. My son did not make those girls. She looked at me and said, I let you get away with it the first time. I took you in as family. I allowed my son to believe he fathered that brat, but I will not allow it again. My husband was yelling at his mom, and I got up and took my daughter, and I ran to the car sobbing. We Part 2 of how my obsessive ex tried to kidnap me. Around a year ago, my husband anxiously sat me down and told me he had discovered he had a long lost daughter. According to him, he had an ex he got pregnant as a teenager, but she moved away before she started showing and without telling him. She gave birth and kept his daughter a secret from him. Eventually, she put Kat up for adoption. Kat now tracked him down and wanted to get to know him. As I am unable to conceive on my own, I was very enthusiastic and encouraging of them meeting. I asked him about DNA testing or speaking to the mother or adoptive parents. He told me all of that would come in due time, but based on the details she shared with him, he was 90% sure she was his biological daughter. Their first few visits together were private, but eventually we had a big dinner at my house. My husband has seen Kat numerous times since then, both with and without me present. About a week ago, a young man I've never met before messaged me on Facebook. He was Kat's ex-boyfriend and he wanted me to know that this was the woman my husband had been sleeping with. He must have misunderstood Kat's relationship with my husband. When I asked my husband about it, he started crying. He thought I went through his phone and found the text messages between him and Kat. Messages when she was in character. Which is how he segued into telling me that they're in a fake, incestuous, daddy-daughter relationship. Can you solve this mystery? This is a story about two young girls, Mandy and Melissa, who are identical twins. But one day they were kidnapped by an unknown man. No one knew who the kidnapper was, but something isn't adding up here. All the clues to what really happened are hidden in what I'm about to say. So Mandy and Melissa were born to a very rich family. They lived in a large mansion with their father and older brother. Everyone was jealous of these girls because their father loved them so much and gave them everything that they wanted and all of his attention. But one tragic night, the girls were taken. When they woke up, they were blindfolded and tied to chairs so they couldn't see a thing. They were terrified. Suddenly, Mandy heard a high-pitched voice whispering in her ear. It was the kidnappers. He said, I've contacted your parents and I'm demanding $1 million ransom. If you try to escape, I will kill Melissa. Then Melissa heard the same voice whisper in her ear. He said, I contacted your parents and I'm demanding $1 million ransom. If you try to escape, I will kill Mandy. So who kidnapped the twin girls and why did they do it? Can you solve this mystery? Story. This is why you should always trust your gut. In the 1970s, a young couple decided to go for a late night hike in the woods. A couple minutes into their walk and the man remembers thinking something's not right. He tells his girlfriend, but they just decide to ignore it and keep going until he steps on something that felt really soft like it was alive. Before he has a chance to see what he stepped on, they hear all this rustling in the bushes next to them and they bolt. Years later, that couple turns on the TV and a death row inmate who's about to be executed is being interviewed. And they ask him, was there ever a time that you were almost caught red-handed? He responded, yes, one time. I was in the woods and a couple walked through and the man actually stepped on the body of a girl I had just killed. I was hiding in the bushes just a few feet away. They didn't see me. That couple had run into one of the worst serial killers of all time, Ted Bundy. 